No Mo Salah, no Trent, no Wataru Endo, no Dominic Zaboslai, absolutely no problem for Jurgen Klopp and his men, as Liverpool stormed through Bournemouth with a stunning 4-0 victory at the Vitality Stadium. The Reds have now soared to the top of the league, amassing 48 points, a clear 5 points ahead of Manchester City, who still do have a game in hand. Now here is out. Predicting a Liverpool win might have been easy, but a 4-0 thrashing away from home against a Bournemouth team in top form, that's something few could have anticipated. So how did Liverpool manage to seize these crucial three points so comfortably without their key players? Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe button as we dive into our detailed analysis. If you called a 4-0 Liverpool victory before kickoff, you're either a die-hard Liverpool optimist or just incredibly lucky. Ariola's tenure in England with Bournemouth hadn't exactly been smooth sailing, managing only one win in their first 11 matches, but a remarkable turnaround followed their 6-1 loss to Manchester City. The Cherries upped their game, securing six wins against teams like Newcastle and Manchester United, drawing with Aston Villa and only faltering against Tottenham in their last eight outings. Dominic Solonkai has risen as the club's standout player, ranking as the league's third highest goal scorer with 12 goals. However, Ariola deserves credit for elevating the entire Bournemouth team. From their relentless high pressing to efficient build up play, the Spanish manager has shown that quick managerial change isn't always the magic fix for a club. That's why a 4 0 win for Liverpool, especially missing four key players, seems highly unlikely. But Jurgen Klopp brushed aside these concerns with an apparent ease. As usual, he opted for his favoured 4 3 3 formation Allison in goal, Canate and Van Dyke anchoring the defence. Gomez on the left, and as expected, Conor Bradley making his Premier League debut in Trent's right-back slot. The midfield featured Alexis McAllister as a number six, Curtis Jones in his regular LCM role, and Harvey Elliott stepping in for Sabozla at RCM. The dynamic trio of Luis Diaz, Darwin Nunes and Diego Jota kept interchanging up front. However, the scoreline might mislead you to thinking Liverpool had the game under control from start to finish, which wasn't the case at all. The first half was evenly matched with Bournemouth actively probing Liverpool's right flank with clever combinations. The Reds adapting to the absence of their key players opted for a more direct approach rather than playing through Bournemouth's press. This shift in strategy was evident, but their actions seemed rather rushed in the final third, with Liverpool players frequently choosing to take early shots. However, the second half unfolded quite differently. Once Darwin Nunes netted the opener in the 49th minute, it was as if the floodgates had opened. So now let's explore how Liverpool managed to secure four goals while keeping their sheet clean. As usual, Klopp's trademark counter-pressing and emphasis on creating transitional moments were pivotal. The Reds maintained their high-pressing approach, average 6 PPDA in the game compared to Bournemouth's 10.4. However, and despite the fact that six high turnovers didn't result in shots, Liverpool's directness was key in the opening up of the game. The opener from Nunes followed a long switch from Canate to Curtis Jones. The second goal also originated from Jota's long pass to Nunes, and the third was a result of a through ball from Gagpo to Nunes. A recurring element in these goals was Liverpool's strategy. During a possession phase or immediately after the regaining the ball, they looked to create a transitional moment with a long ball into the final third. Once there, a swarm of four or five or even six Liverpool players would flood the area, seeking a numerical advantage and more threat in the penalty box. This approach demands high athleticism from the players and is somewhat of a risky, almost suicidal style of play. Such a tactic would leave the defence exposed and is not feasible without Van Dijk and Canate solidifying the back line. Klopp has immense faith in this pair, often leaving them alone at the halfway line and pushing every other player forward to overwhelm the opponents. And to be honest, both defenders, especially Canate, did not disappoint in this regard. The Frenchman's performance was nothing short of exceptional, winning 12 out of 15 duels, including 8 out of 10 aerial battles. He wasn't just the defensive powerhouse in this match, his overall game was in a league of its own. What really stood out about Canate this season is his remarkable improvement in ball handling and progression skills. That switch for the first goal towards Curtis Jones wasn't a bit of luck. Those line-breaking passes, ball carrying and manipulation are all testament to his evolving abilities. Canate is displaying a skill set that could very well elevate him to the ranks of the world's top defenders. Connor Bradley also put in a commendable performance, constantly pushing forward, which not only led to two solid scoring opportunities from himself, but it also saw him bag his first assist for Jota's second goal. 
On his flank, Bradley faced debutant James Hill and a right-footed Sinistera, who tended to drift into midfield rather than directly challenging the young right-back. While this might have been an advantage, Bradley's defensive showing was solid in its own right. Joe Gomez once again proved his versatility, playing a pivotal role on the left side with 50 successful passes out of 62 attempts. He was not just a pass master, but also a significant progressive force. And let's not overlook his assist for Darwin's second goal after switching to the right back position later in the game. Overall, the back four had a relatively light workload defensively, particularly in the second half. This was largely due to Bournemouth's players struggling with the execution and decision making in the final third. Even as the game was winding down, David Brooks couldn't reach the Reds' clean sheet, missing a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with Allison. On the flip side, Liverpool were ruthlessly efficient in front of goal. Guys, this is not a drill. It might sound a bit unbelievable, but it's true. Darwin Nunes has outperformed his expected goals, scoring twice from just 0.86 xG. This should be a warning sign for other Premier League clubs. The way Darwin finished both of those goals was uncharacteristically composed for him. The finesse he displayed in slotting the first goal, rather than just hammering it, indicates a maturing approach in managing his temperament and decision-making in finishing scenarios. His second goal was textbook example of a perfect placement and timing, coupled with that innate striker's instinct in the box. With this performance, Darwin becomes the first Premier League player this season to hit double figures in both goals and assists across all competitions. He might have a game where he scores none from 3xG, but calling Darwin a flop is far from the truth. The way he moves between the lines, the chaos he brings, and the ability to generate this amount of chances is something that not every striker is capable of doing. Even when he had to play on the left wing, Darwin was effective in beating his man and putting in quality crosses into the box using his weak foot. If Darwin manages to maintain his composure in front of goal, then seriously, Premier League defenders might have a new nightmare to deal with. Now another pivotal figure in yesterday's triumph was Diego Jota, contributing a brace and an assist. How consistent and dependable is the Portuguese forward? Coming off of a long injury spell, he's returned with three goals and three assists in just three games. His precision in striking the ball, finding the corners of the net, was clearly on display in both of his goals. Whether it's a powerful shot or a near post or stealthy strike to the far post, Jota's versatility leaves goalkeepers with little chances of making a save. Looking ahead, Liverpool face a busy schedule with two cup ties on the horizon. First up, they return to Craven Cottage for the EFL Cup second leg against Fulham, followed by a FA Cup fourth round home match against Norwich. Then it's back to Premier League action, welcoming Chelsea for the 22nd match. There's good news on the horizon for the Reds, as both Sir Bosley and Trent Alexander-Arnold are expected to make their return in time for the Chelsea clash. Motaro Endo's availability, however, hinges on international commitments. Meanwhile, Mo Salah is back in England, but he's starting his rehabilitation from an injury that he picked up during the AFCON. The Egyptian Football Association has expressed hopes of Salah rejoining the national squad for the AFCON semi-finals, though this seems doubtful. That wraps up our summary and tactical analysis of Liverpool's commanding 4-0 victory of Bournemouth. Was this just a stroll in the park for the Reds? Did Bournemouth just have an off day, or did Klopp's tactical directness combined with the lethal finishing of Darwin and Jota seal the deal? We'd love to hear your views, so please do share your thoughts in the comment section below, and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe button for more insightful content. Thank you, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Push.